I tried every single diet you can imagine and none of them worked until I made this shift and then I lost over 40 pounds easily. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did in this video, so keep on watching. Hi gorgeous, my name is Natalie, Dean of Students here at the It Girl University. And in today's video, we are gonna talk about my 40 pound weight loss. Well, actually it was over 40 pounds, but we'll get into more details in that in a second. If you haven't already, go ahead and watch the It Girl Glow Up Guide video that I posted last week. I touch on my 40 pound weight loss. And if you're just in the middle of a glow up journey and you just wanna get the blueprint on how to do that step by step, that's gonna be the perfect video for you to watch, okay? And then you can come back to this and we'll start talking about physical transformation and how to really start that glow up journey. Okay, so let's get the disclaimers out of the way, okay? I am not a medical professional, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a diet specialist, whatever name you wanna give it. So I really highly recommend you talking to your doctor, talking to your physician or whoever, or consulting with a professional before you start any diet or any exercise regimen. Also, I'm fully aware that there's several conditions or medical conditions that people can have that make it very, very difficult for them to lose weight. So when you hear how I lost the weight easily, I don't have any medical conditions. I have no hormonal issues. I don't have PCOS. I don't have any thyroid issues. I don't have any issues that are preventing me from losing weight or that's making it that much harder for me to lose weight aside from age. The age is the only factor I have in weight being a little harder for me because my metabolism is nowhere near where it used to be when I was much younger. Does that make sense? Can we move on? Okay guys, so how about nobody told me I was fat? No, nobody told me I was fat. I literally had to make that realization on my own. Like I had to wake up one day and be like, girl, girl, weight to lose okay it really took me I'm gonna tell you exactly what it was I went on vacation I went on a family vacation to Mexico and I had all of these beautiful outfits planned and I was ordering really cute bathing suits and things like that and I was taking pictures the whole entire time I felt great I was walking around the resort I felt amazing right you know in my head and then I saw a picture of me I said, wait, hold on. Who that? Who is that? Cause that don't look, that don't look like me. <laughs> that don't look like me. I was like, girl, you need to lose some, you need to lose some weight. It was very jarring because when you're gaining weight, you don't realize it. You're, you're looking at yourself every single day. So you're looking in the mirror and you're like, girl, the makeup is beat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Baby, I should have took the hints that my body was giving me, okay? Because Lord knows that even though I couldn't tell that I gained weight by looking at myself in the mirror every single day, but my knees hurt, my back hurt. It was hard for me to walk up a flight of steps. Lord Jesus, don't ask me to walk nowhere. Don't ask me to walk nowhere. Mm -mm. Cause I was gonna be tired. I was gonna be out of breath. I just was not healthy, okay? And that moment right there, this was June of 2023. I will never forget me looking at a picture of myself, big as hell. Never forget it, okay? Ever since that day right there, ever since that day right there, I've been on it. I've been on it. So let me talk about where I started from. I was over 220 pounds. The reason why I say I was over 220 pounds is because I did not weigh myself at that time at all, because probably subconsciously I knew that I was gaining weight and I was a little bigger. But even when I came back from Cancun, I didn't weigh myself. I just got all my ish. Like 
I was working out. I was like on diets and I was like, I gotta, I gotta lose weight. Okay. So I don't know exactly how many pounds it was. I probably was like three weeks into my weight loss journey when I finally stepped on the scale and we were at about 218. So it goes to show you, I probably lost several pounds by the time I got on the scale. Okay. So that's why we're saying 40 pounds. So we're going to say the start weight was 218 pounds, but I know I was well over 220 pounds. I'm like, I know it got to me guys. It got to me and it got to me in ways that were deeper than just girl, you big as hell. You need to lose some weight. It was more so like you can do better than this, Natalie. You can do better than this. You let's not pretend that you feel the best all the time. Let's not pretend that you have outfits sitting in your closet that you'd love to wear that you don't wear because you're not where you need to be in order to look great and to feel great in that outfit. And I had to have a coming to Jesus moment where I was like, girl, you're just not doing your best. So that was really my breaking point. It's just realizing that I wasn't being my best. I wasn't living to my fullest potential and I wasn't enjoying life like I could be because deep down inside, I was just not comfortable with how I looked. I just knew that I could do better and I was not comfortable being at that weight. I was in pain. My back was hurting. My knees were screaming. Okay. The 220 pounds on my poor knees, girl. Okay. So, yeah, I just needed to do something. So I did that. The minute I got back from Cancun, I hit the ground running. I hit the ground running. I was not playing any games, okay? So let's talk about the three things that I did that really got me to lose the weight. The first thing we're gonna start with is food. How I changed how I ate, how I looked at food differently. I had to really look at food differently and not from a perspective that I wanted to deprive myself, but more so I needed to really crack the code on weight loss. And for me, and I think period, I, I, I don't, I'm at the point now, I really don't care what nobody says to me about food. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. You need to figure out how many calories that you can intake every single day to maintain your weight. It's, it's calories in and it's calories out. So if you're completely sedentary and you don't do anything at all, you need to figure out how much food you need to be eating every single day to not gain another pound. Like if you're comfortable with your weight, you need to figure out what your total amount of calories you can eat to maintain that weight. That's where you're gonna start. And you're gonna need something called a TDEE calculator. Pretty much what that is, is your total daily energy expenditure. That's what that stands for, okay? Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the calculator. I'll link it down below for you. You're gonna click on that. You're gonna go to that calculator and you're gonna input your sex, your height, your weight, and your age. You're gonna also wanna choose what your activity level is. So let's say you're sedentary, meaning you work at an office job and when you leave that office job, you come home and you sit on a couch. Like you're literally not doing anything every day at all, except for getting up, getting dressed and getting yourself to your office. If that is you, then leave it at sedentary. If you walk a lot or if you have a job that requires you to walk a lot, you want to start putting in your actual activity level because then you'll get what your true amount of maintenance calories is. So just pay attention to that. Once you get what your maintenance calories is, then you can go down there at the bottom of that page and it's going to give you some options if you want to maintain if you want to cut if you want to bulk i chose cutting obviously because i wanted to lose weight now the example that i'm going to show you here is if i'm showing you me completely sedentary and if i want to lose a certain amount of pounds per week it recommends that i cut 500 calories per day so if my total calories was at 1700 and i cut 500 then i would be at 1200 calories per day Okay, I highly do not recommend you going anywhere below 1200 calories. That's just too little of food to be eating and you just don't wanna do that. Especially with the way that I did this whole entire program that I kind of just made up or came up with when I realized that it was working, I could not cut 
500 calories from my diet, so I did not. There were days that I would do 1200 calories, but I kept it to a minimum for the most part. I stuck in about the 1400 calorie range. So I cut about 300 to 350 calories per day. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna figure out what your maintenance calories is, and then you start cutting then you'll do your calorie deficit. Does that make sense? Now that you have the amount of calories that you can eat per day, I figured out, okay, I can eat 1400 calories per day. Now I need to figure out how to track that. I found Lose It, not sponsored. This isn't sponsored or anything like that. Um, I found the Lose It app and y'all, it changed the game for me. I just really like the way that it tracked not only my daily calories, but it also can track my macros. It also can create a program for you. If you tell it what your goal is, it will go in there and it'll tell you how many calories to eat. If you wanna eat more calories during the weekends when you're gonna be out with friends or family, you can adjust your calories from Monday through Thursday. And then when Friday comes around, you can eat a little bit more Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I just really, truly enjoyed that app and I highly recommend it. I do pay for it. I think it's like 15 bucks for the year or something like that. Another thing that I did that is extremely important and something that I really slept on for years and the first few weeks that I was on my weight loss journey, I was not doing that. So for the first few weeks, I was not weighing my food because I was trying every single diet on planet Earth and I was doing keto, I was doing this, I was doing that. And although I was following the rules of keto, I was still overeating y'all. <laughs> I was still overeating, so I wasn't losing any weight. It wasn't until I realized that how am I tracking how much food that I eat? If I'm just making stuff and I'm cooking, I'm grilling chicken and I'm like heavy pouring the oil, like y'all, it's so important for you to weigh your food. I got a food scale and I started weighing my food. Once I started weighing my food and I started realizing what a serving size looked like, y'all, you wanna talk about, I was horrified because then I started thinking about all the things that I had been eating and how I had been eating and how I had to be taking double or triple amount of my daily caloric intake in a day. That is insane. Like when I was doing the keto diet, the amount of cheese I was putting on like my eggs, it's like hundreds of calories, not 50, hundreds of calories that's just crazy because you don't realize what 28 grams of cheese really look like you don't you don't recognize it the only way you're gonna know what 28 grams of cheese looks like is if you weigh it a scale is about 10 to 15 dollars on amazon get the scale sis okay so that's what I did and really it changed the game for me because then I knew every single day I was taking in my recommended calories to cut. I knew I wasn't going over 1400 calories. And if I did go over 1400 calories, it didn't much matter because my energy that I was expending kind of took care of that for me. So keep that in mind that like, it's okay if you go to 1450 calories, if you're moving your body more. And what I love about the Lose It app is the Lose It app would let me know, okay, yeah, you burned these extra calories. Those extra 50 calories you burned during your walk. And so now you're at an even 1400, or you might be, I might've dipped below. I dipped below for sure several times. So scale, track your calories in an app. Super, super duper important. Another thing with food that I did was I stopped tripping about carbs and I stopped tripping about fats. I used to, I, I tried the keto diet and the keto diet, first of all, just made me feel horrible in the very beginning. Towards the end, I actually felt a lot better, but I got the keto flu really, really bad. And I, it just was very difficult for me to go every single day without any carbs at all. It just, something about it just didn't feel right for me. And I just, I could not do it. I know keto works very well for so many people. So I do think that it's a viable option 
if it works well for you, but for me, it couldn't. So I didn't restrict carbs. All I did was I tracked it. That's it. That's it. That's all I did. So yeah, I still ate carbs. I still have fats and I still lost weight. A couple of other things that I think are very important to note is that I did not drink anything outside of water, coffee, and tea. So I didn't drink any juices aside from a smoothie, like a protein shake. I did have energy drinks though, but I cut out the juices, which helps because you might pour a cup of juice. You don't know how much juice you pour in and it's 220 calories, child. And then you get a refill at the restaurant. Now you at about 440 calories. You know, I stuck to water. I stuck to my LaCroix, my Perrier, still water. I just drink the hell out of some water and I would bring my huge, I don't have it here, but I would bring my Stanley cup with me to work every single day and I would fill that up and I would just keep drinking my water every single day. The other thing I did to kind of cut the amount of calories I was probably intaking every single day was I stopped using like extra virgin olive oil because a tablespoon of that is like 120 calories or something crazy. Unless you're measuring that one tablespoon of olive oil, that could be a good two, 300 calories right there in it. And, and you're trying to cut back. So imagine if, you know, that piece of chicken that you're grilling is what's gonna take you to your, get you to your 1400 calories per day. Well, the olive oil you just cooked that in, depending on how much you put down, just shot that thing back up to your maintenance calories. So I stopped using that and I use like a zero calorie spray, just whatever brands, it doesn't even matter, whatever brand that you can find, I use that and that really helped me out a ton. So I can still grill it and I would still spray it on top of like my salmon or my chicken and get a nice sear, or get a nice color, but I didn't add the calories and that made me feel so good. Also, if I wanted to have like toast or if I wanted to have like an English muffin and I wanted to put butter on it, I would just use like a zero calorie butter. Like I can't believe it's not butter or something. I don't use it often because it can't, just can't be that good for you. If I have to just go without that, then I'll just go without it. It's not a big deal. I rather my calories come from something that's gonna like stick to me. You know, like a food, an actual food. If I'm gonna eat two, 300 extra calories, I don't want it to be from fat. I don't want it to be from oil. I started to just eat much healthier foods and I started cooking at home. Cooking at home for me was also very huge, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Whenever I do something like this, in order for it to be something that I can sustain long-term, it's gotta be easy. It's gotta be easy. If it's not easy, I ain't doing it for long-term. Cause probably about at by the end of the week, I'm tired. I'm tired, I don't wanna do it, I don't feel like doing it's too much work. And I've got kids, I work full time, like I got stuff to do. So if it's not easy for me, then it's not gonna be sustainable. So what I did was I came up with meals that would make it very easy for me to keep this up. And so my meal prep was extremely easy. If I was having salmon, if I was meal prepping salmon, I would cook all of them at one time in the air fryer, 20 minutes, boom, I had four pieces of salmon for the week. My rice that I would eat with my dinner were packages that you could just warm up 90 seconds in the microwave. It was like a quinoa and brown rice blend that I got from like Costco or Sam's Club or something like that. Super easy. And then I would either steam some broccoli or I would like saute some vegetables that I also got from like Costco. It's already there. I don't have to cut it. It's fresh vegetables that are flash frozen. If you know me, then you know, like I'm gonna come up with the lazy version of the meal prep every single time. I would saute these vegetables that took about five, six minutes to make. And then I would just go ahead and put them in my little meal prep bowls along with my 90 second rice that I would split in half and my protein and boom, I had my dinners for the whole entire week. And then for my lunches, you know, it would be something like a really hearty protein smoothie, yogurt with granola. So meal prepping, I made sure that it was really easy for me. And if you guys want me to do a video about like what I eat in a day to lose weight, 
comment that down below. I only want to make it if you want to see it. So comment that down below if you want me to show you what exactly I eat in a day to lose weight. And I'll be sure to film that video and upload that video for you guys. Okay, so that's it. It's calories in, it's calories out. Argue with your mama. Argue with somebody else. I'm not gonna argue about it in the comments, okay? Like calories in, calories out. That's what worked for me. Once I got that in my head, oh baby, I had no problem losing weight. The, the weight started falling off of me, period. So there's nothing anybody can say. It's like, it wasn't until I did that right there. That was like the thing that made it like go and that's that on that. So the other component to me losing weight was me figuring out the workout that I would love to do and enjoy, okay? I started lifting weights when I started my weight loss journey. I was lifting weights, I was on a program, I have a tonal at home, so I was literally lifting weights four, four to five times per week. And don't chew me out in the comments when I say this, but I was getting bigger. Mind you, I'm eating well, I'm working out, and I feel like I'm getting bigger. I feel like I'm getting bigger, like, or I'm just not losing any weight, and I stuck with it. I was like, let just Natalie keep on doing it. You know, at, at some point, you're gonna lose some weight. At some point, you're gonna see the difference. I think at week five, I was just like, I was defeated. I just felt so, incredibly defeated because I'm like, I'm not, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel good to me, you know? And I had to make the decision, either you do the diet that's best for old girl that's on Instagram, or you can listen to all these fitness gurus that are telling you that you need to lift weights if you really want to be nice and lean. Well, baby, I was getting bigger. I was bulking. And that's okay if you want to like, lose fat and build muscle at the same time, which is a great goal to have. I really do think it's a great goal to have, but for, for my mental, what I really wanted to do overall, more than anything, was lose the fat. And I wanted to lose the fat as quickly as I could. And that just wasn't really working for me. And more importantly, it just wasn't working for my mental. So I just was like, I need to find something different. So then I said, cardio, right? Let's do cardio. I used to run all the time years ago. I was at the point where I was running like five miles a day. I was in my running bag, okay? And I loved it. Like, it's true what they say about the runner's high. I absolutely loved running. And then I twisted my ankle and then I had to stop running. And so it had been years, but I decided, you know what, Natalie, you got a treadmill. We're gonna start running. But when you're 200 pounds, what you think running does to your knees? It tear them things up. That's what it do to your knees. It's gonna tear them things up, okay? When I tell you my knees were on fire, whoo, my shins, girl. So I started this little running program on the Peloton and I was doing a lot of running. I was doing a lot of sweating. I'd get off of the treadmill and I'd be drenched and I was doing it every single day. And don't get me wrong, I definitely started trimming up, right? But I was like at about a half a pound, I think, per week. And with the way that I was eating, you know, I was, I was measuring my food. So I know that I was in a calorie deficit. And according to my calorie deficit, I should have been losing more than about a half a pound a week, you know? And I was lucky if I lost a half a pound. I went an entire month and I didn't lose not one pound. And it just, it was just really like devastating to me. So then I said, you know what? Let me try to incorporate cycling into my regimen. I love cycling, so let's do that. So started, got on my Peloton bike and started cycling every single day, which, oh, I loved, okay? I loved, completely loved, and I'm cycling every day, or if not every day, every other day, and I'm getting off the bike, I'm drenched. Now, I did start to drop and lean up a little bit, and then that also halted, you know? Like, I was seeing some results slowly, but at the same time, 
I was staying still. It's like at the most for the entire week, I was still at maybe a pound, maybe I, I would hit a pound off of the scale before a while it was just nothing. So after doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks, I came across a video and I can't remember what video it was, but basically the gist of the video was just talking about how you want to be in your fat burning zone. I think if I find the video, I'm gonna link it down below because this guy really broke down to me how to really burn fat when you're trying to lose fat. This is so important. And he just said he walked. All he did was walk and he walked in his fat burning zone. And I was like, huh, you know, like, oh, okay. And he did that every single day. All he did was walk. Mind you, he was ripped. He was ripped and he showed him losing weight, like how, where he started versus where he ended up. And this man was shredded like in like 90 days or something really crazy. I was like, dang, like that's amazing. So all I gotta do is walk. So I found out what my fat burning heart rate was, put my Apple watch on and I started walking on my treadmill. First, I started with about 30 minutes. I would walk for 30 minutes in my heart rate zone, and that was it. You really need to walk about 45 minutes to an hour per day, because after 45 minutes, that's when your body really starts utilizing your fat stores as energy. So when you're in your fat burning heart rate, it's using your actual fat stores. So you want to always stay in that range. And when you get to that hour, like you really genuinely burned fat, completely changed the game for me. So after a week of me walking every single day for an hour, that's when the weight started just dropping. It wasn't a half a pound per week. It was like three. It was like three. Okay. The weight just started dropping off of me. And I was like, dang, I should have been doing this all this time. So aside from me walking every single day, the only other thing that I did was I did Pilates. Doing Pilates, uh, I love Pilates. Pilates is great. It still helps you with lean muscle. It stretches you out. It's so calming. It's just so fun. I love Pilates and I only do like 20 minutes. I just do the whole like 20 minute sequence and boom, I'm done. 25 minutes at the max, done. Matt Pilates, not reformer Pilates. You don't have to pay $40 per session to get on a reformer unless you want to, but I didn't. I just did Matt Pilates at home every single day and I either walked on my treadmill or I walked while I was on my lunch break every single day for an hour. The hour, if you do that hour, girl, it was the hour for me. I would wake up every single day, slimmer and slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And I realized right then and there, I said, girl, you done cracked the code. You done cracked the code. <laughs> and I was like, oh, say no more, say less. That's a wrap. We got this because it was easy for me. That, that, that was easy. I didn't have to pep talk myself before I got on the treadmill. I didn't have to pep talk myself on my lunch break to go take a walk because it was nothing to take a walk. Taking a walk outside is a breeze because you get to see nature. In my case, I was in the city. I would talk on the phone, have a conversation with a girlfriend, or I would talk to my mother every single day. And if I was like in my neighborhood walking the trails, it's so easy to walk when you have nature to look at, right? Like. It couldn't have been any easier for me. So walking changed the game. Walking and Pilates changed the game. 45 minutes to an hour in your heart rate zone. Figure out whatever that is, put on a heart rate monitor, put on your Apple Watch, put on whatever you use to monitor your heart rate and walk, okay? Okay, so let's talk about the last piece of this puzzle. Intermittent fasting, ooh change the game. I'll at least intermittent fast about four to five days a week. And if I want, I'll take the weekends off. It'll be a little less strict for me since I have my family and we might go out to dinner or something like that. I did at least 16 hours. And I say at least because I actually start fasting at 11 a.m. every single day. That's my last meal. I eat my dinner at 11 a.m. So technically I can end my fast at about 3 a.m. or 3.30, but I don't wake up until about 5.30, 6 o'clock. 
So I would get an extra three hours in and it just made it that much easier for me to fast longer. And if you've ever looked at like how the body works or fasting and the stages of fasting, you'll know that once you pass about 18 hours, you're scorching fat. You're scorching fat. So on days that I would get to about 19 to 20 hours, I'd be scorching fat. Now, I don't think, it, I've been fasting for a really, really long time. It's nothing for me to go 20 hours without eating. I had zero side effects from it. My cravings go away while I'm intermittent fasting. I have a lot more energy. I have a lot more clarity when I'm intermittent fasting and I've never had anything negative happen while intermittent fasting. It's probably something I'll always do. So I highly, highly believe in intermittent fasting and um, just do your research on it, obviously. Everybody is different, but the combination of me eating in a caloric deficit, tracking my food, walking 45 minutes to an hour per day, and fasting at least 16 hours, really, 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 shifted everything for me and it allowed the weight to just fall off of me guys i'm talking just i was melting every single day i woke up i was smaller and it took very little effort because by this time i knew exactly what i was eating every single day i knew what i was eating my meal prep was a breeze right walking simple you didn't have to beg me to walk i loved it and i loved it pilates love it barely break a sweat when I do Pilates. So it's like, it's been the easiest, simplest thing that I can do to lose weight. And that's the reason why I say it's so easy because I'm not forcing myself, I'm not pep talking myself to lift a whole bunch of weights every single day. I'm not pep talking myself to sprint for 30 seconds on and off. Like I, I don't have to do that. So it's nothing for me to put my sneakers on and just take a walk outside for 45 minutes to an hour, listen to an audio book or whatever the case is, or just enjoy nature. And guys, I'm telling you, like just changed my life. I'm still on this journey. I have not gotten to my goal weight. I have about a good 20 pounds to go before I get to my goal weight. So I'm gonna continue to do what I've been doing, which is just tracking my food, weighing my food, eating in a caloric deficit, I'm walking and I'm intermittent fasting. That's what got me from this to this. I mean, <sighs> huge difference. Okay, so let's talk about the last thing that I think is completely instrumental in me losing the weight is discipline. Discipline and patience. I had to have a mindset shift. I literally woke up one day realizing that I could be a better version of myself and I promised myself that I was going to work towards that every single day until I got to my goal, you know, or until I felt better about myself. And it took an immense amount of discipline in order for me to get there. It also took patience. I had to be very patient because the results were not going to come overnight. I didn't gain all that weight overnight. They weren't going to come overnight. I had to be diligent and I had to trust the process before I ever saw any results. And then when I did, when I figured it out, like even when things weren't working for me, I didn't give up. I didn't, I didn't give up. I just shifted and I pivoted and that taught me so much discipline. I realized that I had the ability to be disciplined and to create healthy habits, but it was something I woke up every day and I had to choose every single day to make the right choice, to make the choice that was gonna ultimately lead me to my end goal. And my end goal was to be the best version of myself. The end goal was for me to be the woman that I felt like I was inside. So that was like, like, like the bag of chips was never gonna taste as good as feeling good, whatever feel. So yeah, you're gonna have to have the mindset shift. You, you're gonna have to be disciplined. You're gonna have to practice discipline because discipline is super important. Don't be lazy about it. Don't be lazy about it. Just decide that you wanna make a change and then make the change. If you think that weighing your food every day is hard, then it's gonna be hard. I don't know, what's easier for you? Feeling uncomfortable in yourself? dealing with how people treat you every single day because we're not going to act like people don't treat you differently when you're like overweight and you're not taking care of yourself and you're not showing up as your best self. Oh, I know. As someone who's been on both ends of the spectrum, 
I know. I know how it feels to get treated differently based upon how you look and what you weigh. So what, what, <laughs> like you just gotta figure out, choose your hard, choose your hard. Either you're gonna weigh your food or watch what you eat. Either you're gonna get up and you're gonna do the walk or you're just gonna deal with whatever you're dealing with over here every single day that's just not making you happy. And I chose to just make the change. And instead of me looking at it like a chore, I approached it in a way in which it was a pleasure for me to do it because I knew doing these actions were going to get me to my goal. And that's really what it boils down to. Okay guys, so yeah, that's my weight loss story. That's how I lost the 40 pounds. It's not just about what I look like, it's just how I feel. I feel so much better, I have so much more energy. My knees aren't hurting, my back isn't hurting. I can see, I can see my girl when I'm in the shower, when I look down, cause let, let's be for real, when your stomach is away, you can't see nothing. You know, I just feel so much more confident inside. I feel so good because I'm doing things to make myself feel better. It's not even just about how I look. I just feel better overall health wise. So that should be probably the main motivator for you more than anything should be what you're going to feel like when you reach your goal. So that's super important. All right, so that's it. That's how I lost the 40 pounds. I'm gonna continue doing this. Let me know if you guys wanna get on this journey with me. Like I said, I have 20 more pounds to lose. If you do, comment down below so I can know and I can have my little tribe. Join my Facebook group. I'm gonna leave the link down below because I wanna do some challenges for the months that are upcoming because summer is about to start. Summer is about to start, okay? So we've gotta get on this right now. If we're gonna reach our ultimate goals by summer or by the end of the year. So I wanna start a challenge. The more girls I have in this Facebook group, the more fun it'll be because we can help keep each other accountable and all that good stuff. But we can also chit chat in the comments down below. I'm happy to do that as well. And if you liked this video or if you found it helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who you might want to start this journey with and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so that way you are notified every time I upload a new video. And yeah, that's it. Class is dismissed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>